Now, the last thing I want to talk to you about is masking. This is masking fluid. This particular one is Windsor Newton. I find it's pretty good. Um, they tell you on the back to shake it when you need to use it. Please don't shake it. It's better for you to store it upside down like this. Now, if you have a problem with it, because this stuff gets old, and the cap doesn't always want to come off. Ah, here we go. All right. This one is pretty good. You can see that the liquid is, um, it's nice and liquidy. Uh, you can work with this in two ways. You can work with it either with a brush or you can work with it with a pen. If it's dry and it's lumpy on this inside, all you need to do is you take your the back of a brush and you wipe it on the inside and pull out whatever is lumpy. This is not going to do it because it's nice and new and it's uh, loose and, and uh, liquidy. But that's the way you would clean it and then just wipe it off on a paper towel. Now, if you are going to use this with a brush, you absolutely must put soap in the brush before you start to work. So you're going to take your brush and you're going to use soap of some kind. Um, this brush cleaner works really well. Uh, you can get it uh, from Dick Balick if you haven't already done so. And you want to leave the soap in the brush before you put it into the, um, the maskoid. Usually you're going to do this on a shape. And you might want to mask off a certain section of that shape so that you can paint another area and have it go down nice and smooth, have your color go down nice and smoothly. Put your brush in the maskoid and then paint in the shape that you want to protect and not paint over. Now I have to tell you this is not an exact science. I might suggest that you try diluting it a little bit by putting a tiny bit of it, just a tiny bit, into a dish and add a couple drops of water so that it's not quite as thick as, as, as it is when it comes out of the jar. open the brush again dip it in our I'm going to paint around the edge and it'll go down a little thinner but it'll still like it'll still work as a maskoid if you need really small letters or you need to have really fine lines you can use a, uh, a fountain pen. The code on here is a 13EF. That's the point that you need. And the point has a little, just has a little tiny um, tip on it that will hold the, uh, the maskoid. You should be able to get really fine lines using the pen. Again, make sure you clean that pen off and wait for everything to dry. As soon as this dries, we'll do a little demo how the maskoid works. Okay, it looks as though our uh, maskoid has dried. So I'm just going to take my paintbrush now and I am going to 
paint in a couple of areas like this shape that we just I just arbitrarily drew and you can see that I can I don't have to worry about losing that light area in the middle and in fact if I want to notice I'm picking up the puddle I can even add some shadows on this by adding a little ultramarine and letting it blend and let's let that dry and here where I just wrote with the pen I'm just going to take a little bit of color and I'm going to just go over the top of this and you can do it with just about anything but now we'll let that dry and see what happens with it so what is your exercise for this week if you turn the page if you go to the next page on your assignment sheet you will see there are images of four different uh, botanicals. You will have to draw four boxes that are one and a half inches square. You will then select a section from each one of these in which to use the uh, fine uh, dry brush techniques or the masking techniques that uh, we just talked about. So in this case I have these already drawn. I've traced off four different sections from the printout. I have transferred these uh, tissue drawings onto my good paper and, uh, in the, and as you can see I've already started this um, to show you where you might be able to use the techniques that, uh, that we were talking about. Now, you can see here, this originally was masked off, and now it is a little sloppy because that's the way it is with uh, Frisket. It is not an exact science. So what you need to do now is go in with dry brush and clean this up. We're going to use our small brush here and test it. And you're just going to go in and very carefully repair the edges. And it might take a couple of layers of painting to get to that point, but eventually you'll be able to get a nice smooth shape that was lost in the masking process. But the thing about the masking process is that it allowed you to paint this entire area that's dark quite efficiently. Whereas before you would have to paint around these little shapes and things get much more blotchy in that in that process. Let's see if I can get this a little bit more. Now here, in this case, I put a wash of yellow. And you can see that it transitions to white or even, well, in, in the case of this one, you're not going to see the gray um, in, the, in the painting. Uh, so you have this white, or you have this yellow um, underlaying, underlying color, and then you can put your green with dry brush, and I would use a bigger brush for this, and feather it out. test it, and then you can go back in here and fill in, flare your brush, and 
fill in color as you need it in order to get the same look and feel that uh, that you see in the in the uh, sample sheet that I gave you. But you're working very, very dry. Now here, this section here, we're going to have to go back in and we're going to have to paint this in quite dark. Um, again, you know, making sure that you have the right color green and it should match what's here. So you need to test this or make sure you're matching whatever this green is so that when you do this section here, in this case, when I do this section here, I'm going to be able to um, have it look the same. 